Hello, I'm Reverend Garth Schumacher, and you've come to the Congregational United Church of Christ of Amory, Wisconsin Bible Study, Lectionary Bible Study. Would you please pray with me? Holy One, may the light of your love shine in us, that we also may in turn be the light that shines in the world, sharing your gift of justice and peace and love throughout the world. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Well, this week's lectionary Bible study is from the book of James, chapter one, verses 17 through 27. The, uh, the joy of this is that it talks a lot more about the works of being a Christian. What are the ways we need to live in the world as a way of expressing our faith in the world? James is considered part of the wisdom religion, the wisdom tradition, the wisdom literature. What do I mean by wisdom? Uh, James talks in much broader strokes, brush strokes about our faith and the, the larger ideas of what it means to be a Christian. And this is considered also to be one of the earliest books of the New Testament, along with Galatians, written by Paul to the people of Galatia. And so this comes out of Jerusalem. And as you'll recall, James was the brother, the biological brother of Jesus. Interestingly enough, um, it is said that James, through different passages that we read, that James really wasn't on board with Jesus being Messiah, not until Jesus' death and resurrection. And this was his response for the community of Jewish Christians there in Jerusalem, but also to those outside of Jerusalem, the diaspora of Jews throughout the Middle East at that time. And this was his message to them. In it, he expresses listening over speaking, patience over anger, meekness over brashness, and action over inaction. Care for the vulnerable, widows and orphans, and ethical living that is unbeholden to the status quo, but based on the goodness of God. So let's hear this passage from James, chapter 1, verses 17 through 27. And I'm drawing this from the version of the Bible called The Message. So it's more contemporary language. Hopefully you'll like it. So my very dear friends, don't get thrown off course. Every desirable and beneficial gift comes out of heaven. The gifts are rivers of light, cascading down from the Father of light. There is nothing deceitful in God, nothing two-faced, nothing fickle. He brought us to life using the true word, showing us off as the crown of all his creatures, the first fruits of creation. Post this at all the intersections, dear friends. Lead with your ears, follow up with your tongue, and let anger straggle along in the rear. God's righteousness doesn't grow from human anger. So throw all spoiled virtue and cancerous evil in the garbage. In simple humility, let our gardener, God, landscape you with the word, making a salvation garden of your life. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you are a listener when you are anything but letting the word go in one ear and out the other. Act on what you hear. Those who hear and don't act are like those who glance in the mirror, walk away, and two minutes later have no idea who they are or what they look like. They don't know themselves. But whoever catches a glimpse of the revealed counsel of God, the free life, even out of the corner of his eye, and sticks with it is no distracted scatterbrain, but a man or woman of action. That person will find delight and affirmation in the action. Anyone who sets himself up as religious 
by talking a good game is self-deceived. This kind of religion is hot air and only hot air. Real religion, the kind that passes muster before God the Father is this, reach out to the homeless and loveless in their plight and guard against corruption from the godless world. Thus ends our reading for today. Thanks be to God. Now, again, I really like this passage because it tells us we are to walk our talk, not just talk the talk, but walk it. Do the things that are necessary to bring God's love into the world, into the world we live in. Not just be up in our heads and our spirituality, but share it with others by doing. This was something that none other than Martin Luther had a real problem with. Because as you'll recall, Martin Luther touted faith over works. And this says a lot about works. And what we believe is the confusion is James was saying, no, have that faith. Absolutely. And yet, if you really have that faith, you're going to act on it. It is faith in action. That's what the works are, according to James. So we do need both. So with that in mind, I'd like to share this song by Richard Brooks for Culligan. It comes from John chapter three, verse eight, talking about how we are to follow along with the spirit. And indeed, that is certainly the best way to live our lives in the world so that we might be able to, to share God's love by walking our talk. So here it is. Hi friends, it's Richard with a new song for you. It's about the wind. Ha. This song comes from the Gospel according to John chapter 3 and it's a scene you might remember. It's Jesus meeting with Nicodemus at night. Now Nicodemus was really smart. He was a teacher himself and, and really uh, educated and he was looked up to but he had some serious questions so he came to Jesus at night and said what? is all this about anyway? Can you help me please? And in the midst of their conversation, <laughs> Jesus says this funny thing. He says to Nicodemus, you know, the wind blows wherever it wants to, and you don't know where it came from, and you don't know where it's going. I wonder if Nicodemus was irritated at that answer, <laughs> or maybe he was relieved. Oh. Good, it's like the wind. I don't have to figure out everything in the world. Uh, well, this is a song called The Wind Blows Where It Will. And it's about your life and my life in Christ. Your part goes like this. The wind blows where it will. The wind blows. The wind blows where it will. yourself 
to the grace The wind blows where it wills The wind blows The wind blows where it wills The wind blows Let me hear you there. this air come from watch it drive the clouds you are like a good tree rooted deep in the ground the wind blows where it will the wind the wind blows where it will. The wind blows. So there we have it. Thank you, Richard. That was beautiful. May we have our faith and may we have the strength and courage once we are infused with that faith in God, in Christ, with the help of our Holy Spirit. Would you please pray with me? As God's beloved, we are called to focus our attention on God as the giver of good gifts and to make these gifts and God's goodness known to all people throughout all the earth, particularly the poor and vulnerable toward whom God has always had a particular interest and passion. May we stand alongside the vulnerable and being doers as we flow with and in God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, everyone. Hope to see you this Sunday. Bye-bye.